All right, so today we'll be going through the steps you need to take to pack a rack 16-foot cargo chute. And just for starters, the things you'll need are an inspected cargo chute. It's been inspected down in the loft, ready to go. A 16-foot parachute D-bag. Uh, one quick thing to look for there is just make sure you got enough rubber bands before you start so you don't have to go back later and add some. About three per section is a good, good starting point. And also two rubber bands to close the flap. A couple shot bags, scissors, tape, and a marker, extra rubber bands in case you need them, and some 80 pound brake tape. Alright, so to start, you'll just uh, hook up the apex up here, make sure it's pretty dressed and neat. Come down to the other end of the table, grab your risers. Give it a tug, just make sure it's straight. If it's not, uh, do whatever you need to do to make sure there aren't any big angles uh, in the lines. Pass the riser and take it off. And all of our parachutes have eight suspension lines, um, and you should be able to flake four gores on each side. So, start in no particular place, just flake out one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Count back four. I should have four left. And four on this side. At that point, you'll be ready to start folding. Right on, so to fold our parachutes, uh, we're making a few folds. We'll do the left gores just to the center. Some people do it a little bit over, but just make sure you get it to the center. Right group also to the center. And then you'll repeat that process. everything to the center on both sides so you wind up with a symmetrical triangle with uh, two folds on each side and then the final step you really fold the whole thing in half so your shot bags come in handy shot bag there Once it's folded and dressed, you'll be ready to tie off the apex and S-fold it into the bag. Alright, so uh, once you've got the chute all folded and ready to go, you're going to open the D-bag with the flap facing away from the chute. Take about, a, I don't know, one, one foot or 16 inch piece of brake tape. You're going to go through the loop on the static line. And you're going to go through the apex loop back through the static line loop. Just like the mains, you're going to want about three fingers and then tie it with a surgeon's knot and locking knot, smoked over knot. So two down low, left over right, right over left, and then trim the tails about one inch. And if you can't release that, just pulling on it, you'll be able to go down to the other end and release the tension. Uh, from here, it's just a simple S fold, starting in one corner of the bag, and just trying to fill out the corners as much as you can. Going to the opposite corner, doesn't really matter which end you start on, just whichever end you start on, start going opposite corners. Kind of a Z S fold hybrid. And at this point, you're just kind of going straight in because the width matches up. If there's any excess like I just had, you can kind of just clean it up right in the middle. Dress up the corners. And 
And at this point, you're using, some of our bags have a little slit right here. This one has just a P-cord loop. Either way you do it, you're gonna to wanna to pass the closure rubber band through that loop, or if it's a slot, you do that too. And that'll be your first locking stow. So just make sure it's oriented upwards. Two wraps, and try and keep the rubber band as flat as possible. And just come over to the other side. Pass it through. Second locking stow. This is a good time to kind of dress up the bag. Tuck in the corners. And from here, you're just going to wrap down to this opposite left corner. Double wrapping every time. And at this point, you're just going back and forth, back up toward the top of the bag. and you got your stoves. So at this point, uh, you've kind of cleaned up your stoves and if you only have that much left, you don't want to get any of the stitching into a stove. Uh, so if you have any excess, just kind of tidy it up and you want to end up having your lark's head kind of right in the middle and you'll take about an 18 to 24 inch piece of brake tape Start at the top of the bag, come around, doesn't really matter which position you capture this at, but I go at 7 o'clock, so through the, through the enclosure in the riser, you kind of see it stitched on both sides. And then the next important step is to make it through each closure on the bag, and pass back through where you started. So then as you tighten it down, kind of stowing everything, getting it all in there, and closing it up with a smoke jumper knot, which is two wraps, surgeon's knot with a square knot on top. One inch tails, and then clean up the clean up the flaps as best you can. Just kind of pull everything toward the center, and then keep it symmetrical so it opens nice. Hopefully, and twist up. And that's a good time to kind of just smush it down on the table. Make sure you've got a nice tight package on it. And every shoot will get a label, uh, just masking tape, and that'll include your name, uh, just your last name, as well as the, the date the shoot was packed. And once you've got it labeled, take your risers, over the top and just secure it with a couple overhands. Done deal.